Being sick kind of sucks. It's the Wilk Report. I'm Michael Wilk, coming to you from Cleveland, Ohio. And yes, I am homesick from work, which uh, really sucks because, uh, you know, it means lost wages and uh, having to go get uh, tested for COVID again uh, because uh, uh, I can't take the chance of uh, taking it to the office. I'm pretty sure it's a cold, but, you know, I don't know. So I got to go get a Q-tip jammed up my nose again on Friday. So, yeah, um, but as you can see from my green screen background, uh, yeah, Blockbuster Video. I used to work for that company way back in the day, uh, 1996 to 2001, uh, in fact, June 96 to about February of 2001, yeah, so almost five years. Uh, but the reason I'm going ahead and reminiscing about Blockbuster Video is because, uh, last week, Sumner Redstone passed away, yeah, the, uh, Media mogul, tycoon, uh, former CEO and chair of Viacom, uh, died at the age of 97. And yeah, uh, it's kind of weird because uh, I worked at Blockbuster during the time when Blockbuster was owned by Viacom. And uh, towards the end of my run there, uh, there was... There, there were all sorts of shenanigans going on. Uh, quarrels with Universal, one of its uh, suppliers, uh, to the point where Universal actually pulled its videos from Blockbuster store shelves uh, because Blockbuster kept trying to screw Universal, uh, Universal over on uh, revenue sharing. So, yeah, and a lot of that uh, does lead back to Sumner Redstone and the way he handled uh, the business. Uh, but let me go ahead and take you to the uh, newspaper, uh, no, news article, I'm sorry, news article from Variety.com because it turns out that his biggest legacy may not actually be Viacom CBS, but his daughter, Sherry. So yeah, uh, why Sherry, Sherry Redstone is Sumner, uh, Sumner Redstone's most important legacy. In life, Sumner Redstone expended considerable energy to promote his legend as a daring and cutthroat media mogul who amassed one of the lar world's largest collections of TV and film assets. After his death at the age of 97 on August 11th, it became clear that Redstone's greatest living legacy was never destined to be Paramount Pictures or MTV or CBS or Showtime or Nickelodeon or any of the other prizes he claimed in more than a half century of aggressive deal-making. Or morally... <laughs> Va moral vacuum deal making but you know hey uh, at a moment of massive transition for the entertainment industry Redstone's most significant bequest is to have laid the foundation for their first woman his daughter Sherry Redstone to wield power as a true boss and owner in 21st century Hollywood <laughs> and oh the bullshit is laid on thick here because Sherry Redstone's machinations uh, particularly against CBS are well known, but not necessarily uh, the uh, bed of roses that the media article is making it out to be. Because, uh, you know, as was covered here in, on this very channel and also Midnight's Edge and uh, other channels, you know, Sherry Redstone never really signed on to Sumner's decision in the early 2000s to split Viacom and CBS into two, uh, two separate entities because... You know, it got to the point where Redstone, I think, decided, you know, look, I'm getting old. I can't manage this big, huge company uh, the way I used to. Uh, plus, you know, I don't want to go ahead and uh, make it so big and unwieldy that, uh, you know, it just falls that much harder. So he decided, for better or for worse, to split the company in two. And so you had Viacom, which still maintained ownership of Paramount, on the one hand. And then you had CBS on the other, which owned uh, Star Trek, the TV show, while Paramount owned the movie rights. And this created problems for Star Trek that persist to this day, uh, even after the remerger. So, uh, <coughs> oh, pardon me. Like I said, being sick sucks ass. Uh, but... You know, Les Moonves uh, infamously canceled Star Trek Enterprise, the show that followed Voyager, 
uh, trying not to be Star Trek by deliberately going out of its way to not call itself Star Trek. It was just Enterprise for its first three and a half seasons, uh, or two and a half seasons, I think. Uh, but, you know, it went out of its way to not be Star Trek, and, you know, that's where it started losing Star Trek fans. And the problems uh, with Enterprise and with Voyager, actually, were never about uh, ratings or people getting franchise fatigue. It was actually because... Uh, the decision was made to put Voyager and Enterprise specifically on UPN Network, which only had a fraction of the market uh, spread that uh, syndication would have given it. So, you know, previously shows like Star Trek The Next Generation and Deep Space Nine, uh, you, you can find that in pretty much any local market, you know, that was affiliate, that uh, was affiliated with Paramount and Viacom. But with UPN, that was specific to its own market and was trying to compete with other stations so uh, I remember here in Cleveland Channel 43 was the UPN station and that carried UPN shows but you know that was a, a situation oh excuse me uh, where you uh, just are limited to only those stations that carry UPN and again UPN wasn't carried in a fraction of what TNG and Deep Space Nine were. So yeah, you saw a drop off. But Les Moonves came in in the early 2000s and, you know, he famously despises science fiction. So he canceled Enterprise in its fourth season just as it was starting to get somewhat decent. And so we end up with the uh, very dismal uh, series under These Are the Voyages, which. Uh, it was an awful ending to a, a rather mediocre show that, uh, you know, again, for the first two and a half of its four seasons, went out of its way to avoid being Star Trek. Uh, and I suspect a, lot, a large part of that was because of uh, things that were happening that uh, were done to appease the likes of Moonves. So, uh, but yeah, Redstone really kind of screwed things up for Star Trek and for a lot of his other properties when he did that and we're just now starting to pick up the pieces but it might be too little too late because Viacom CBS not doing so well especially during the pandemic but let's go ahead and uh, take another look at the article so perhaps his most remarkable achievement was producing a person even tougher than himself in Sherry says Eric Gordon professor at University of Michigan's Ross School of Business so yeah here we're seeing you know they're trying to puff up Sherry Redstone as, uh, you know, being even tougher and uh, more shrewd as a business person than her father. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it, the, the spin job is really relentless, and they're trying to uh, r really sell this a as, you know, some kind of, like, woke article, but it's not really because it's basically fluffing the new asshole-in-chief. So... Yeah, so Redstone had complicated relationships with both of his children, son Brent and daughter Sherry. The billionaire family battles frequently played out in the business pages of major newspapers as the outcomes had implications for the Redstone Empire. After all, Sumner Redstone was already 64 in 1987 when he expanded from the exhibition business to making multi-billion dollar bets on the entertainment companies that led him to coin the phrase, content is king. Sherry Redstone worked for years at the family's National Amusements Holding Company, where she proved to be an innovator in running the movie theaters. On her watch, National Amusements were among the first theaters to offer expanded luxury touches like food and drink service. So, yeah, and the, the rest of the article, obviously it's a fluff piece for Sherry, but, uh, you know, again, Sherry, obviously the apple has not fallen far from the tree, but, you know, in terms of controversy, uh, Les Moonves infamously ousted as CEO of CBS because of his uh, tendency to rape people, uh, you know, particularly women and girls who uh, had the misfortune of working under him. He famously or, uh, or infamously uh, shoved out Linda Bloodworth Thompson, who created Designing Women and I think Coach and a, a few other shows. And... <coughs> Uh, constantly stringing her along, uh, you know, teasing that she would get shows if only, uh, you know, just, you know, wait here until she basically left after getting fed up. So, uh, you know, again, you know, that was Sumner Redstone's decision to put Moonves in charge. And uh, Sherry, of course, uh, never liked Moonves for obvious reasons, but also because, 
you know, he's really screwing things up for uh, Star Trek and other properties that uh, really have been in the Redstone family since the 1980s. <coughs> oh, sorry. Uh, so, yeah, this is, you know, a Variety's attempt right now in, in the media spin to really kind of whitewash Redstone's history because the fact of the matter is that some of Redstone, you know, he was rather ruthless, all right? Yeah, he might have you know, develop national amusement theater chains, but his biggest investments were in Paramount, uh, buying that up for Viacom and also CBS and MTV, uh, Showtime, uh, all these media properties that basically, you know, turned him into a media emperor uh, in an age of media empires. So, you know, the, and then of course there were the, the, the famous... Uh, feuds with uh, other studios like Universal, like I said, when I was at Blockbuster Video, the Universal pulled its content from uh, Blockbuster shelves because of the strife that was created, you know, largely because of decisions that uh, Blockbuster made under Sumner Redstone's watch, you know, because he was running uh, Viacom at the time, and yeah, Blockbuster had its own CEO, just like uh, CBS and uh Paramount, and you know, they all have their own CEOs and, and presidents, but you know, the fact of the matter is, he was the one in charge, and he could have said, you know, look, we're not going to go ahead and try to uh, take uh, one of our businesses and force it to fail just because we can't get along with one of our rival studios, uh, because it is in the video rental uh, market, you want to maintain as much content as you can, and when you piss off a major studio like Universal, to the point where it pulls its content, yeah, you're going to suffer. So, you know, that that is part of the uh, legacy that you don't hear about for Sumner Redstone, or Sherry for that matter, uh, because, you know, a lot of the uh, tendencies uh, today uh, when an evil person dies is to uh, kind of portray him as this, you know, kind uh, elder statesman or... or uh, not being nearly as bad as he was in real life, and I don't believe in doing that. I, I believe in criticizing people who deserve criticism, even after they've just died, because you know nothing but the truth should be spoken about someone. So, uh, to me, you know, the, the passing of uh, Sumner Redstone, you know, again, is not unexpected. He was 97, so yeah, he hung in there probably a lot longer than he should have. But, uh, but the fact of the matter is. You know, he was kind of a jackass uh, in a lot of respects uh, in terms of the decisions that he made that have affected properties like Star Trek uh, that are still affecting uh, the franchise even today uh, under thief Alex Klutzman, which brings me to my next video uh, regarding uh, Anas Abdeen's video game Tardigrades and the uh, theft of his intellectual property by CBS and Alex Klutzman, which... Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to be a righteous rant because I am rather pissed off both for Anas Abdeen and for uh, Star Trek, which, and and pissed off at CBS, which basically can now feel at liberty to steal people's intellectual property and suffer no consequences just because it's rich and powerful and, you know, no one's going to hold them to account. So, uh, but that's in my next video. I'm going to go down some uh, cold medicine and try and uh, get as well as I can before my COVID test later this week. So take care. If you like what you've heard and you want to hear more, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever we upload new content. Like this video, share it. If you want to help support the channel, keep the lights on, help us bring you more content, head over to our Patreon or our subscribe star page. We can't do this without you. Until next time, this is Michael Wilk for the Wilk Report saying take care. Good night. I'm out.